So I've been using Emacs for quite a long time, and one of the biggest things that convinced me to give it a try was the well-known and beautiful org mode. Org mode can be seen at a surface level as just a simple markup language, but it's actually a very powerful tool. As far as using it as a markup language, you can use it just like Markdown, but it has quite a few extra features that make it, I find, a lot better for a lot of organizational things, which is what most people use org mode for. Personally, I use org mode for my day-to-day -day note taking, which I do quite a lot of. I take quite a lot of notes, as well as my to-do list, and also for planning basically every single minute of my day, um, since you have a scheduling feature, and I even use it as my calendar. And that's not even taking into account the multitude of extensions out there that provide abilities to reference URLs and pull them in and download like images, or even do something like, say for example, include sections of a completely different file in your org file and have it dynamically update for you. That's another extension. There's plenty of other ones out there. Now, as you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And as you can imagine, such a powerful tool often causes a lot of people to get freaked out, it kind of pushes people away from actually giving org mode a try. People go like, oh, I don't need something like that. Or they say something like, it's just too complicated to understand, or I don't want to go down this rabbit hole. And I feel like a lot of people don't really quite realize that org mode doesn't require you to use all of these different features. In fact, it's a lot more useful when you just use a few of the features and combine the ones that you want. That's kind of how a lot of people end up using it. Now, when people say that they don't actually need org mode, um, that is probably true. You don't literally need it, but I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much power it can offer them because it's basically one of the very few tools that allows you to basically use it for whatever you could possibly want. Now, the second one, obviously, uh, comes from a bit of shock when you see all the different packages out there, you see all the crazy things people are doing with it. Um, and I totally understand where the shock and awe comes from. I think if I wasn't coming into it with uh, pretty open arms and willing to look at new things, I probably would have thought, uh, I'll put that off and maybe look at it, I don't know, someday down in the future when I really want to go down a rabbit hole, but not today. Now this video is meant to mostly demystify this idea that org mode is this huge thing where you have to learn all this stuff. It's actually really straightforward and in this video I'm just going to go over it and show you basically how you guys can get started using it right now and replace like a couple tools that you use right now and then where you guys can go to learn more and some of its actual power that you can use right out of the gate with what we've covered in this video. So first of all, let's not get things too complicated. The actual process of using org mode at a surface level is really simple because it's basically just a markup language. And right now you can actually go ahead and replace Markdown with it pretty easily in a ton of places like GitHub supports it, GitLab I believe supports it, um, Gidea, which is like a self-hosted alternative to GitHub supports it. Lots of different places support it. And obviously since we're in Emacs, Emacs supports it um, and basically every package supports working with org mode. Now, the best way to get started is we'll go ahead and kind of go over the general syntax of how to make it. We'll switch to the scratch buffer, which should be there out of the box with Emacs. And what we'll do is we'll do org mode. There we go. And so now we have set the current buffer to use org mode. So first thing we'll do is we will make a heading. So in Markdown, a heading starts with a hash. Um, but in this case, that is just a comment. And so if we wanted to make a heading, we would just do a star as the heading and then heading. Uh, you'll notice that here I used a, a back tick. That's just to escape the bullet there because if I went ahead and removed that, um, sometimes it will or we'll try and recognize that as part of the syntax. So I just put that there. Now for bolding, um, like I said before, I just escaped these, but that's not completely necessary. So what we want to do to bold in Markdown is we would use two stars on either side, um, but that's not really necessary in org mode. We can just do one star, so star there, star there. And if we just did bold this, um, and we have stars on either side, then it will bold it. And then if we just typed normally beforehand, um, I have it set up to kind of hide these. Um, I'll put a link down to my dot files if you guys want to look at how this is all set up. Um, but as you guys can see, everything before and after is not highlighted. Only the stuff inside of the stars is highlighted. Now moving on to italicization, um, italics, if you will. Uh, in Markdown, you would do stars, but in org mode, you do slashes, which I think kind of makes sense. It's like a tilted over, so you want to tilt your word. So uh, italic and then slash, and as you can see, it's italicized. Next, on to underscores. Uh, there isn't really an agreed upon way to do this in Markdown. It seems like it's implemented very differently um, in different implementations of the 
not spec, I'd say spec and with really loose terms, there isn't really a specification that it seems like everyone follows, but common markdown seems to be it. Um, in org mode, all it is is just underscore um, underline uh, this, and then just an underscore on the other side, just like that. Now, one that I end up using a lot is actually using um, links. Now with org mode, uh, I find that this is pretty straightforward. You just do one set of braces for the actual whole link to go in, one set for the name, and one set for the URL. Um, but in Markdown, you end up doing uh, this strange amalgamation, which I guess in theory is less typing, but I find that I always forget which one goes on which side um, if I haven't used Markdown in a while. Um, and a lot of things like to actually like use this very similar notation to this. Um, and the nice thing about links and URLs is that they can be really anything. Um, and there's a shorthand in Emacs to enter links. You can do control C, control L, and then I can do file and I can uh, give it the path to a file um, desk, and then it will insert a URL, um, which can be quite nice. Now, one that I end up using a lot is actually using um, links. Now with org mode, uh, I find that this is pretty straightforward. You just do one set of braces for the actual whole link to go in, one set for the name, and one set for the URL. Uh, oops. Um, but in Markdown, you end up doing uh, this strange amalgamation, which I guess in theory is less typing, but I find that I always forget which one goes on which side um, if I haven't used Markdown in a while. Um, and a lot of things like to actually like use this very similar notation to this. Um, and the nice thing about links and URLs is that they can be really anything. Um, and there's a shorthand in Emacs to enter links. You can do control C, control L, and then I can do file and I can uh, give it the path to a file um, desk, and then it will insert a URL, um, which can be quite nice. And now we get into quoting. Uh, so this one is sometimes used, it's not quite as common to uh, actually see people quoting things, but basically the notation in Markdown would be um, a right angle bracket and then your quote. Um, but in uh, Emacs, it's a little strange. You're going to do hash plus begin underscore and then quote um, to start a quote and then to end a quote, you're going to do hash plus end uh, quote. Um, which I realize is a little strange. And then my quote here. Um, now this is, I guess, like fine. A lot of people will probably find this to be a little too verbose for them, um, which is pretty understandable. And luckily there is a actual built-in feature um, that I mentioned right here in my show notes. I'll link these down below um, as long as I remember. And you can basically access them with a little shorthand, which is a left angle bracket left angle bracket, and then um, a Q, and then hit tab, and that will expand to a quote block. Um, and you can do the same thing with an S and hit tab, and it will give you a source code block, um, which is really helpful. All you gotta do is just require a temp org tempo in your um, init.el, uh, or if you use use package, you can do use dash package um, demand T. Uh, just to ensure that it's actually being loaded. But uh, for anyone that doesn't use use package, you can just require it. It's fine. It doesn't take too long to load. Now, a question you might be wondering is what are the actual benefits of using this over org mode? And the big thing for me is these extra features that it adds to the actual markup language. So something that you can use and a lot of other things tend to do to do this is using tags, um, which I think are just a, I think there's a bunch of different ways to write them. You could do a tag like that or a um, uh, putting uh, colons on either side, uh, I think is how this is done in Markdown. And a lot of people kind of try to like fake a lot of these features with that, but having it natively built in means that basically um, anything that recognizes Markdown, or sorry, org mode can actually use them. Uh, so the first one is to do states. So you could do to do at the start of a heading and that will set it to a to do state. Um, and then you can do uh, if you want a shorthand, you can do control C, control T, and this will give you all the options. So I've got an extra few extra ones here, but if I wanted to just set it as done, I can just hit D 
and it marks it as done and it even gives it like a date that it was closed on. Um, and you can do shift and arrow keys to kind of cycle between these. Um, but yeah, so going back to to do. Um, so this can be pretty helpful. Um, I find that this is really the biggest benefit for project management. Um, you can do like bulleted lists, um, which I guess is like not not the worst, this thing here. So you can do bulleted lists um, just like I showed just now. Um, they're just basically um, a dash and then square brackets and then whatever you want to type. Um, and this can be helpful and you even have uh, the ability to nest them and then you can hit control C, control C to just check them off. Um, and these have like some benefits, but in reality, I only use those for very small things like picking up groceries. And I tend to stick to um, actually using the to-do headings for most of my project management. Now, another useful thing is actually being able to mark uh, priority. The easiest way to do this is just to do shift up and down to like kind of change the priority. Um, but basically all they are is just square brackets and then a hash um, to basically say what it is. Um, and you have like A, B, C, and you can add extra ones. Um, I usually use these for whenever I have like nested to do's with an, in a heading. So like I said before, like we have headings and you can just add extra stars. So two stars makes it the next level. Um, three stars makes it the level after that. Um, and so on and so on. So uh, second heading. And so say I've got, let's say we've got uh, three headings. So these are all to do. Now I can actually prioritize them with just uh, some simple priorities just like that. And so this can kind of help me um, rank things and I can refer to these as kind of like the priority of what needs to get done. And another one that I use very heavily is the actual timestamps, um, which include like a deadline, a schedule, and just a general timestamp. Um, so to insert a timestamp such as a deadline or a schedule, uh, there's a little shortcut, which is control C, control S to schedule um, something. And there's like this little calendar interface here. It's kind of blocked off by my notes off to the side, but if I just move those over, um, there's this little notes interface, but I usually like to just kind of describe the day. So uh, let's just do, um, I don't know, May 10th, and it will schedule that for May 10th. Um, and I can even change like uh, 1 p.m. And I can say, oh, it's going to take like an hour. So let's do plus one for one hour, and it will schedule it for May 10th from one to two. Um, I think there's a way to actually change how this is displayed. Uh, so it's not in military time, but uh, I didn't do that. And then you have deadlines as well, which I mentioned right here. And to set a deadline, you can do uh, control C, control D. This will set a deadline. Um, let's just remove that just like before. And you can like navigate this with the shift arrow keys to kind of like change what date you have and you're looking at. Um, but sometimes I'll just do, say for example, if I want this uh, for Friday, um, 3 p.m. And then you have a scheduled time and a deadline, um, which can be quite helpful, um, mostly for the fact that uh, it usually just like gives you like a time, say for example, uh, if you're in school, say you have a deadline for an assignment and you want to schedule time to work on it, that's kind of when I would use the scheduled um, times. Now, in addition, you can also add extra timestamps. So uh, you could say, for example, like um, this is going to happen on, and then you can do control C dot, and this will let you insert a timestamp. Um, let's just say this one's on Thursday, Thursday, uh, 2 p.m. And then you insert a timestamp um, right where you are. And this will uh, be usable in pl plenty of other different contexts. Um, I'll kind of show this off in a little bit when we get back to it. Um, but this is a nice way, say, for example, if you want to say things that already happened and they're not really scheduled or a deadline, um, that could be helpful as well. Now, really quickly, I kind of wanted to show you guys how you can start using this right away. So like I said before, you could create a heading, heading like I said before, with one star heading here. Um, you can create a subheading. This is it. Um, don't forget that my actual things that I'm typing are down here, so you can actually um, follow along if you want. And then maybe we want to do a list of thing 
to do. Oh, these should be to-do lists, actually. Um, let's just go like that. And then other thing. There we go. So we've got all these things to do. And then now we could actually manage all of these. So uh, let's go ahead and turn these into stars, actually. Yeah, there we go. So we've got all these to-dos. And as you saw, there's a really easy way to switch these around. Like I said before, um, this is more of a showcase section. So if you don't want to see that, uh, you can move on to the next part, um, which will actually show off the actual benefits here. Now, hopefully that didn't scare you guys away. Um, the point of that was mostly just to showcase what is possible. Um, if you guys want to get into this, I recommend looking at a few different things. I, remember, uh, I recommend looking at uh, or capture. It gives you a getting things done style way to capture ideas, tasks to do, yada, yada, yada. Um, I have that bound to control C, C, and it gives you this nice little interface. I could say to do, and then I can type in what I want to do, and it gives you a way to describe templates, um, which can be very helpful. Uh, next thing I'd recommend is looking into org export, which can actually be used by doing control C, control E. And this will give you a bunch of different ways to export your org file to things like, as you can see here, um, you can export it to an iCalendar, HTML, LaTeX, um, a dot, an open document file. I can't remember what it is. It's what they use for LibreOffice, um, plain text, and plenty more. Um, so you can actually export it to Markdown if you ever wanted to do that for whatever reason. And then org agenda, which is what I was just showing before, which can be accessed um, with the org agenda command. Um, and there's lots of configuration options. System Crafters has a really great video on org agenda, um, as well as um, uh, Prot has a great video. I'll link both those down below. Um, highly recommend taking a look at those. Um, and yeah. And then another thing that I recommend taking a look at is uh, Org Roam. Org Roam is um, kind of similar to the Roam application, if you've ever heard of it. Um, but Org Roam is not built in, and it kind of takes a different approach. It tries to um, use Org for a different approach to note taking than what I use. I like to kind of do a laissez faire approach where I just uh, throw file, throw notes into files, and track them all um, manually which is probably not very well thought out. So uh, maybe one day I'll give Orgrom a try, but I don't use it at the moment. Anyways, guys, I know that was a pretty short overview. Uh, really the whole point of this was to not get too complicated and hopefully I didn't scare some of you guys away when I tried to show the more intricate features of Org and what you can do with it. Um, there's a lot of other stuff you can do. You can actually have it integrated with your phone. Um, there's an Android app that integrates great. I use its widget all the time for kind of my checking to see what I've got next in my daily schedule, that sort of stuff, as well as an iOS app that has become pretty popular. And actually, even though it's newer than the Android one, I think it's actually um, at least gotten close to it in feature set, which is really impressive. Um, it's got an active community, so I highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, and it can integrate with a bunch of other tools. There's a way to actually access your org files from a browser. There's lots of stuff out there. Um, but I first of all just kind of recommend looking at it as a markdown format. And then when you want to try out some of these other things that are out there, just try them one at a time. They're all meant to be interchangeable. You don't need to use all of them. Um, so don't get to, don't feel like you have to learn a lot. You can just try it at a surface level and work from there. First of all, I wanted to give a big shout out to my GitHub sponsors. I really appreciate all of you. Um, I wanted to shout out Brian Jenks and Platinus. Thanks you guys for supporting me on GitHub sponsors. It really means a lot. Now for my Patreon supporters, I see that we've got quite a few new ones, so I appreciate all your guys' support. We have Will Taylor, Andre Tar uh, Tarikin. I'm not really too sure on that one, so if you feel like correcting me, I'd really appreciate it. Um, Alexander Arkaminko, once again, correct me on the last name. Uh, Jim Lawson, Miguel, Russell Willis, and Connor G. Once again, you guys, I really appreciate all the support that you guys have done. Um, it really means a lot to me. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.